Hi, everybody. This is Pamela Price, or CS Professor Pam. Welcome to Pam Tech Coding, where I create videos to take complex programming concepts and break them down into digestible bite-sized pieces. And what we are going to do today is work on some CSS and HTML. And the best way to do that is by making something. And often um, you may not have a design or something to work from. You've got to have, you know, a plan for what you're going to create. So sometimes the best thing to do is to try to clone something that exists. And so we are going to make our own clone of this Google um, homepage. And we're not going to focus it on focus on it being exactly pixel perfect, but we want to understand basically how to approach building a site like this kind of step by step. So I am going to start at the very beginning. One of the first things that you um, typically want to do when you're creating projects is um, create a repository in your GitHub account. So I am going to create a repository called Google Page Clone. And I always give it a README file. And I'm going to create my repository. Once I have that, I now need to grab either my HTTPS or I actually have an SSH um, link set up. I need to grab this URL. I need to go to my terminal. And go to whatever location it is where I want to save my repositories. If I do an LS, I can see where I am. I want to CD or change directory to my desktop. And here I have another directory called my files. I'm gonna go there. And in there, there is a directory called GitHub repos here. So I'm going to CD to GitHub repos. And what I'm doing right now really just has to do with making sure your work is organized and you know where to find it. And so here is where I want to create my repository. So I'm gonna do, uh, let me clear. I'm gonna do git clone and I'm gonna paste in that directory. And you'll see now, I just do G star. Um, I now have this directory called Google page clone. All right, I'm now going to open up my Visual Studio. Um, I have it open over here. And let's go into that directory. So I'm going to open folder and go to my desktop, go to my files, go to my repos and Google page clone. We want to open that folder. All right, so we need to create two files in here. We're gonna need an index.html and we're going to need, I'm gonna call it, um, we'll do style.css. All right, in my index.html, I need to use my template here. I'm going to give this a title of Google. I'm going to set up a link to my CSS page and it's called style.css. All right, now let's take a look at this page and come up with a plan for how to build it. Um, it's important in my mind that you need to work on things sort of one box at a time. And so the first thing I am going to work on is this sort of header or nav bar. I'm gonna call this my nav bar. Um, and that is what we're gonna start with. I'm not gonna do search labs here. I'm gonna do 
these links are not going to work um, and these four links over here. All right, so let's go over here to my body. I always like to create a div for my entire page to start. Um, it just usually makes, you know, you could use body, but I like kind of having a box inside of body that I can control. So I'm gonna give a div and I'm just gonna give it a class of page. So this is my overall box. Now let's start on our first, and I'm gonna put some comments in here so we know what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna start on the, the nav header. That's what this first section is going to be. I'm gonna actually use one of our semantic tags, which is nav. And I want you to notice before we, we get too far, how I am making sure to indent things that are inside of something else. So in this case, here's body. This div with a class of page is the first child of body. And this nav is the first child of div. And this is gonna be very important as we work on our layout to be very clear about who is the parent and who is the child. All right, so when I look at this, what's very important about being able to style something, you cannot actually style your page properly if you have not, um, if you have not structured the HTML in order to do it. And actually, let me bring this over. This is actually the one that I'm going to clone. You'll notice it doesn't have that other thing on it. So we're, we're not gonna do this one. All right. And so when I look at this, this top box, I see sort of two sections, okay? That's very important to recognize. I see this section here, and I see this section. I see two things. So I need to structure that to have sort of two different sections to it, all right? So what I'm going to do when I build this nav, inside of it, I am going to make two divs inside of it. I'm gonna have one div that I'm gonna give a class of nav left. I like to use very descriptive names so I can be clear about what's going on. Um, and let's just do this for a second. I'm just gonna put left side there. And here's the other one. This one is gonna be nav right. I want you to see how um, I'm not trying to go in one step from nothing to exactly what I want. There are intermediate steps. All right, let's look at this, open this up with live server so we can see what we have, right? And so here's what I'm looking at right now. And we can see that these two things are one underneath each other instead of side by side. So we need to do some styling here. We're going to use Flexbox for all of our layout here. Um, and there are other videos that you can use if you need to get more of a refresher on how Flexbox works, but we're just gonna be using it here. So I have these two children, nav left and nav right are two children. Their parent is nav. It's the parent that needs to be specified as a flex box. Now, actually, first of all, there is some reset code. We want to always set our margin to zero, our padding to zero, our um, box sizing to border box. This is just always what I start with. And let's just set up a font family that looks a little closer to what we want, which is gonna be Verdana. 
Um, I have auto save on, so we can already see the change in the type, the, the font here, which also verifies for me that my style sheet is connected properly. All right, so this nav, for one thing, I want to give it a height. Um, and I'm going to give it a height of, let's say, 60 pixels. And then I want to make it display flex. Now, the minute I do that, look at what happens. Those two things are now on the same row. The default for Flexbox is to put everything on the same row. Um, there is a flex direction property that we'll see in some other styling here. If you want to put things in a uh, column, in the same column. All right, so whenever you use display flex, there are typically two other things that go hand in hand. One is um, align items. And I'm going to say center. Watch what happens. Do you see that they moved down here? And to make it clearer what's going on, let's put a border around. This is one of my best little um, layout tricks that I do because sometimes we need to be clear about what that particular element looks like. So this is my nav bar. And what we've just done is put those two things on the same line and we have put them, aligned them um, in, the, in the vertical direction in the center. Now, the horizontal alignment or the main axis alignment is justify content. And this is one of those silly things that, let me do space between. You might say, okay, so look at what happened. Now there is space between these two things. Now you might say, why is it align items and justify content? Because it is. And beware, there is something called justify items. I think there might be something called align content, but they do different things. So the two that you mo most commonly use when you're working with the flex box are these two. All right, but notice it puts space between them, but it wants to put them all the way on the left and the right side. I might want a little space on the left and the right side, one of the ways that I can do that is with padding. Remember, padding is inside of uh, the border of your element. And I'm going to give it zero top and bottom padding, but maybe 10 pixels right and left. And you see that those things moved out a little bit, right? Okay. So now that we have this idea, remember what we actually want is two links over here with about and store and some links and some other stuff over here that we have to figure out. So let's go to our left side. And instead of this, I am going to put um, a tags for a link. We don't have it. It doesn't go any place yet. So I am just going to put a hashtag in here. And this one is about and let's copy it. And this one is store, right? Let's stop and see what happened. Um, let's make sure we're looking at this one. All right, so we have these two things here, but I see a little something I wanna fix because these are A tags, there's some default styling that always goes along with A tags. And again, this is what's really important um, when you're building a page, doing it kind of piece by piece, because as you see something that you need to fix, you want to focus your attention on that. So I am going to go to my CSS here, and usually all of my A tags, I want to say text decoration none, and there's always a default color. I want this to just be black text right now. 
All right, so we've got that. And I'm going to take this border off in a second, but it's going to be useful for right now for us to kind of visualize what's going on. Okay, what's on the right side? Gmail images, this little icon, which I'm not sure what it is, and my avatar. I actually don't want to take the time right now to find this or find this picture. I want to focus on just kind of setting up the layout. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab, we're going to have two links. So let's grab those, put them over here. And that's going to be, this one's going to be Gmail. And this one is going to be images. And I've got these other two things. Uh, I'm going to put, I think I called this one just an I for because it's some kind of an icon. And so I'm just kind of making a placeholder for something that I need to figure out later. All right. Just so I can work on layout. And we see those things over here, but they're not laid out the way I want. So remember the same way we had to, uh, let's go try styling. Our nav, we, we need both of these. In this case, because they're A tags and A tags are, are not block level elements, they came out on the same line. But I also want to be able to sort of control the layout of these and the layout of these. So both nav left. They're going to have a few things that are different. So that's why I'm going to make them separate. And remember, those are class names, so that's why I have to put a dot inside of them. They are going to need display flex. Let me put it in both of them. And before I go on, let's see. All right, so you see they're now on the same line, but I want to make some space. I want to space them apart horizontally. I remember what we did before, we used this justify content, right? But there's going to be a little issue here we need to understand. All right, so they didn't space out. Why didn't they space out? Well, let me show you. Let's take this border from here. Let's make sure we understand what is the space that's defined as nav left. And you see, if you don't give an element a width, then its width is determined by the actual content that is there. So there's no room to space them out. So if I want there to be room to space them out, then I have to control their width. And so if I look over here, this thing called nav left is a child of nav, and if I give it a width that is a percentage, then it is going to be a percentage of its parent. So let's go over here to nav left and give it a width of, and we can, again, we're not trying to be pixel perfect. We're just kind of getting an idea. So look at what happened. Now the width of this is 20% roughly of this whole nav, and now there is space to put a space between them. So we have to do a similar thing over on the other side, but my right side probably needs a width that's a little bigger. So I am going to here make the width uh, maybe 40%. And we see that we kind of have some space now between what's going on, right? And so this is starting to look a little bit like this. Again, we're not trying to be pixel perfect. We're just trying to get a rough idea, rough approximation right now. All right, so I don't need this little border. I'll take this off. Now, I want to figure out what this little icon is. And I really didn't know. And so I want to kind of take you guys through what I went through to try to figure it out. Um, I literally did a Google, a Google of, I think I did a three dot icon, right? And that wasn't exactly what I wanted. Um, and so I kind of had to go through a few things to sort it out. 
I think where I actually went, because I've also done React, and there's a, uh, a place in React icons where I can look for icons like that. And I think I did, let's do three dot icon um, or three dot. And this gave me an idea and maybe I did three dot square. No, I think somewhere along the line, I realized that it was a grid. Um, and I didn't get three dot grid. I think maybe I went to Font Awesome here and just looked around. But um, what I want to tell you is eventually I figured out that it is called um, a three dot grid. It's actually also called an app icon. I'm going to go to W3 Schools. Let's try here. Three dot grid um, icon. Let's change that. And icons, font awesome. I think I ended up, I ended up in Google icons. All right, I ended up over here in W3 schools and looking in Google icons and um, Again, let's let's try and go to, I think it was navigation. Yes. So I, I ended up finding it, right? You just have to kind of be a little patient and use your search methods and find what you're looking for. Okay, so let's try this. So in order to use this, there is a link here because this is coming from a library. So I am going to grab that, put that, in my um here okay what else do i need to grab i just want probably this size so it looks like it is something like this so i'm gonna grab that and replace this thing that i called i with that and let's see what we get and look there is my little icon, okay? Um, and probably I have these things. I need to change the width to be, I think 40% is too big. Let's make that 30%, yeah. And again, we'll just adjust that later. Um, the icon, so if you see here, there's my little avatar. I literally used a snipping tool to, um, to get that little picture. And what I'm gonna do is create an assets folder here. And if I go find my, uh, there's my little avatar there. If I literally drag it into there, I now have a reference to it. So let's add one more thing here, which is gonna be an image. And we're going to say source equal it's in my assets folder and it's called my avatar.png. Uh, and let's see what I messed up a little something here somewhere. Let's give it another try. I'm actually going to type this in again. I'm going to first do this. Okay, inside assets slash, there we go. Now I'm seeing the file, All right? Sometimes you have to do it more than once to get it right. And there we are. So here's what I was trying to get on this first line. Here's what I have. Ah, there's something else going on here. This is not being centered properly um, horizontally. Right, so let's go back over here. We've got our justify content, but I need my align item center. I'm gonna put that on both of these. 
and yeah now that looks roughly like what we're looking for all right so we have this first part done all right what's the next thing this google logo okay so i need to go find it let's go search for it google logo i'm gonna go in images we're gonna use this in this case instead of downloading it we are going to copy the image address that's what we're going to use to have access to it all right so where does that go remember this is nav we're going underneath nav right that's the next thing that goes goes here so let's just put an image I, there's no need to put it in a div because it's just one thing. And I am going to paste what I got in there, but I'm likely gonna have to style this image. So I am going to give it a class of, um, let's call it, I called it Google image. So let's give it a class in here. All right, let's see what we have. Move this to the end so I can see it. All right, so that looks roughly, we need to put it in the center, but I'm going to come back to that for a minute, okay? I want to talk about this next little thing here. So this is going to be um, a search bar, and actually it's going to need an input inside of it, but there's a number of things going on here. So let's, um, I'm actually gonna, not gonna focus on the actual input part of it. Well, no, we will, we will. All right, so let's work on what we have here. So I see a div that is going to need this little um, search thing. It's then going to need an input and it's going to need this little microphone and it's going to need this other little icon. Okay, that's what I see. So I need to make a div for this whole thing. So let's go to our next thing. And this is my search box. Let's make a div. I'm gonna call it search box. All right. And again, what I see in there, I've got, um, I'm just gonna put I for these icons. I and then my input and two more eyes. And then we're gonna go find the icons afterwards. All right, I'm just gonna use a P tag. This is an I. I need an input type equals text. input as a self-closing tag, and then two more of these. I'm focusing first on just the rough layout of these things, okay? And um, ah, sometimes you just need to refresh the page, right? All right, um, so it looks like I have those elements, but I need them all on the same line. That means search box needs to be a flex box. Display flex, all right? Let's see what happens just with that, all right? You see everything is all kind of on the same line. And... Um, We'll worry about the other spacing later, but let's do let's do a little bit of the styling that I want on this. Um, I want to give it a width. I'm going to say maybe sixty percent. I'm going to give it a border, one pixel solid light gray. All right, let's just kind of see what we got.
Um, and that is, this is my input. Ah, that's my whole, my whole thing that's there, right? And we're gonna need to do a little bit more with this. So let's give it a border radius, maybe 16 pixels and um, padding 10 pixels. All right, so you see this whole thing is my box. We've got to center it. We're going to worry about that in a second. But inside of it, here's this little icon. Here's this input. Here's this. Here's this. Um, let's see if we can turn the border off on the input. So I have an input that is inside of search box. I could give it a class name, but I, I don't like overdoing class names. So I can reference this specific input um, by referencing the input that is inside of search box. And that means I do search box input. Order none. There we go. So the border went away. We, I need to go find these little icons and then we're going to uh, see a little bit more about how to style this. Now, I'm actually going to take a quick pause. I don't want to take recording time to find these icons. So let me take a quick pause and look for them. All right, so I went into my, uh, on Debbie 3 Schools, my Google icons under action. This looks like search. Let me go try it, see what I have. Um, it looks like it's in that same link. I don't think I'll have to do that again. And this is the icon. So let's copy that. That should be here. Yes, there's my little icon. All right, I also need to find the microphone and um, the image search. So uh, let's see if we can find microphone. I'm gonna pause again. All right, so I searched Google icon microphone and it took me to here. Um, maybe it was there. No, I want to go to the try it. There was a try it there. Here we go. And that looks like what I'm looking for again in this material icons. And so I'm going to grab that. And let's put that here. The other one. I have not found yet and I don't want to take the time. So I am going to just put this one twice. Again, a placeholder doesn't have to be perfect right now. Okay. We can make a note that that is something that we have to go back and fix. All right. So let me get rid of a lot of these tabs. I got a lot of stuff going on here and get to my page. And Let's uh, bring that up again. All right, so there are my little icons there. Um, and we're going to have to work on getting them placed. Actually, we've got these two that need to be separate from this one. And so as I look at that now, I realize, let's look again. I'm going to need um, this search, the input, remember it's right there. And these two need to, or actually if we just, let's just try putting them centered. So if I go over here to my style and search box, we need justify content center. Yeah, and we'll be able to control the width of this input box 
um, if it needs to be bigger. So I think that's going to work for right now. I think maybe the width of this is a little too big for right now. So there we go. And this input needs, uh, we took the border off. It looks like we did. Yes. All right. So let's try to remember we've got overall this thing called page, right? All of this content is in a div called page. So, and right now that content is lining up one underneath each other. And that's because they are divs and div or, divs are block level elements. But I wanna be able to control that a little bit more. So I actually want to make page a flex box, right? So I'm gonna start with that one, dot page, display flex. Now, when you first do this, remember the default of flex box is to try to put everything on the same row. In this case, I don't want them on the same row. I want my flex direction to be column, right? Now my image is too big. It's the, the browser is trying to sort of uh, figure out the best sizing for things. So I need to do some uh, styling on that image. So remember, we gave the image a class name of Google image. I'm gonna put that under my nav stuff. And let's give it a width of a percentage right? 35%, maybe 30%. All right, so things are looking a little better now. Let's also control, so when I'm doing a row, then row is the main axis and justify content controls the main axis. When I'm doing column, column is the main axis and justify content controls column. Um, so my off axis is align items and that's what I want to center. So back here on page, align items, center. So I'm trying to get everything centered. And they did center, but something weird happened with my nav, right? And um, if we actually go back, remember when we did that border, Right, so something kind of weird is going on there. And it has to do with Flexbox kind of wants things to be about the same, you know, size. So what we need to do is make sure that it knows that this nav needs to be 100% of the width, all right? So again, you have to kind of focus on one thing at a time that you're trying to fix. And sometimes it's a little bit of an experiment. Um, CSS is my, my kryptonite. Like I, I really have to focus a little bit more on CSS and that's why I take it a little bit slow. Um, we need to move these over a little bit, but I don't wanna focus on that. I don't wanna focus on the nitty gritty details. I want us to focus on kind of the overall picture of what's going on. Um, all right, so what's next? I have these two buttons, all right? So let's make a div for our buttons. Again, notice I'm just walking down the page. So let's make a div. And I called this one, um, we're gonna call it button box, BTN box. And I'm gonna put two buttons in there. This one says Google search. And this one says, I'm feeling lucky. All right, what do I see before I do any styling? Okay, looking not too bad. Um, we need to do a little styling 
on these buttons that are inside of this button box. So let us, uh, and since those are the only buttons on here, I'm just going to style button. Let's give it um, some padding. All right, that already looked a little better. We could change the font size if I wanted to. Um, and if you're going to change the font size, it's best to sort of do it proportional. So I do 1.1 EM. EM units are relative to the normal size of this particular element. So I'm saying make the font size 10% bigger than whatever the normal size of a button is, All right? Let's give it a border radius around those corners, All right? Looking a little better, but we don't want a border on those buttons. So border none. All right, I need a little space around them. So I'm gonna give them a margin of 10 pixels. All right, so they moved out a little bit, okay? Now, um, we're gonna kind of figure this out. I'll finish this up. You see at the bottom here, oh, that's interesting. We're not gonna work on the responsiveness of this. So which way do I wanna do this? Um, let's just do it this way with two lines. Again, that'll give us a little more practice and it would be another lesson to work on, you know, the responsiveness of this at different levels. We're not doing that right now. So I'm going to have this footer section down at the bottom. And actually the first thing that I wanna do is just kind of set up the height of it and the background color so I can just see where it is, right? So let's do footer. I'm gonna give it a height. I'm kind of guessing 200 pixels and a background color of light gray. And I have no content. All right, let's double check something here. Let's just put some words in there, a footer. All right, so you notice I couldn't see anything if there was nothing in there, right? Um, because there was no width, if I didn't give it a width. So now I can see something. All right, let's give it a width of... And that's true a lot of times. You have to make sure about the size of things. All right, so there's a width. 200 might be too big. I think I'll make it 150. But I really want that footer to be down at the bottom of this page, right? So I'm gonna make this height 150. Um, but how do I make it sort of stick to the bottom of the page? Well, it all has to do again with the content that I have. So remember this whole thing called page, right? If I go over here, where is page? And let's put a border around that so I can see what it is. All right, do you see page stops here because it's just based on the content that's there. If I want this to fill whatever is the height of my um, browser window, then I need to specify that this page is going to have a height of 100 VH. VH units are uh, viewport height units, and it is relative to um, my browser here. So I have a height of 
100 VH. Let me just refresh. And actually, do you see my green? We can't quite see it, okay? This is why I be careful. I'm gonna make it make my border bigger so I can really see it. Okay, so yes, you see, that's my whole thing, but I need, now I need to work on the, the spacing um, in my main direction here. So this is my page, justify content. Remember I did align items. I'm gonna justify content space between. And now that wants to go all the way down to the bottom, right? Let me take that border off. All right, so this, this entire page is taking up 100% of the height of my window, right? If I change this, we'll see that. And all the pieces that are in here are being spaced apart, right? And so the last thing is uh, I've got like two lines here. So this is, I'll just call this a paragraph. And then this will need to be a div, very similar to what I did with nav, right? So let's just kind of do that um, inside here first. There is this paragraph that says, can I just go grab the text real easy, real quickly? Our third decade of climate action, join us. All right, let's do that. All right, so that's that. Then, I am going to need a div for those links that are down there. I'm gonna call it footer links. And very similar to the nav, I am going to need sort of a left side and a right side, All right? So let's make two divs. Uh, I'm going to say links left and links right. And I'm going to go grab one of these. And how many do we have? We have advertising business, three on each side, right? So let's do that. Advertising business. What's the next one? How search works. I'm gonna grab these three. There's three on the other side. They go on the right side. And these are privacy terms and settings. All right, let's see what we got with no styling, All right? They're not set up the way I want. So remember, I want these things to all be on the same line, right? All of what's here and all of what's here. So footer links is the parent and it needs to have display flex. All right, see now they're on the same line and we can say, Justify content space between. All right, they spaced out. Um, but each one of them, footer right and footer left, needs to also, sorry, sorry, links right and links left, also needs. And let's try something here. Remember we did that 
with our nav right and nav left, except the widths are different. So yeah, we can't exactly use that, but we're gonna need this. And I'm gonna do, what is it called? Links left. We put that in there. But remember, there needs to be a width so that they have um, a width to, to space between, maybe 40%. Yes, right? And let's just for the moment, let's just do this. Links. Remember, we're not trying to be pixel perfect right now, right? 40% might be a little big. And we need some space though inside of this. And then we've got to do one more little thing. So inside of footer here, I want to give some padding. That's zero top and bottom and maybe 20 pixels left and right. See how that moved in? Um, I'm going to change this percent to maybe 30%. All right, works a little better. And then footer, um, footer links, let's go look. Footer has two children, this paragraph and this div, All right? These need to be indented so we can more easily see the connection. So let's do a little bit on footer. Here we have footer. Display flex, but this is, needs to be flex direction column. Right? And um, column is the main direction. So justify content space between. All right, not exactly what we want. We've got to work on exactly how we want to space that. Let's go look a little bit over here. I think part of the problem is this is too big. I'm going to make it 100 pixels. And yeah, it looks a little better. And we could give um, footer some padding that's inside. 20 pixels. Yeah. And then this paragraph needs to be centered. And that paragraph is where? It is inside of footer, right? So if I do footer P, text align center, then that centers that particular thing, all right? And so it's not perfect, but if we look at that, here is the actual Google page. And here's the one that we created. And I would say, you know, we're getting there. So there's some things we need to work out. I've got to find this little camera icon, I think is what it is. Um, there's some, ah, there's some border shading on here. There's a hover effect. You know, there's a few other things that we can do, but as a first approximation, we have done quite a bit. And we've done that by kind of working the page down one box at a time. And every time you do that, you have to look and figure out what is the HTML content you need and how to structure that. When you've got sort of two sections that need to be separated apart, that's what required two divs inside of here for the left and the right. Um, and, you know, with padding and margin and a few other things, uh, we can actually get it even closer. But I hope you're able to follow along. I hope this all makes sense. Please, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I love to answer questions. And if you like this video, I hope you will subscribe and turn on the notifications. If you've got other videos that you would like me to create, please, again, leave some comments. Always happy to hear that. All right. So hope, uh, ah, let me do one last thing. 
we have been working. Remember we made our repository? Absolutely. Let's do one last thing here. So I need a terminal over here. All right. Let me do get status. So what this is telling me is that we've made a number of changes and I now want to save these changes. So the first thing I need to do is tells me I've have all these untracked changes. So I need to do get add dot to have, if you see red, then you need to add. And if I do get status now, we see green. That means it's green to go to go ahead and, um, and commit these changes. If we have green, that means we have changes to commit. So we do git commit minus M, give it a message and say, um, uh, clone page complete. Our, our first, first step, first draft of clone complete or whatever message you want to give yourself to remind yourself what has gone on, right? Now, if I do get status again, I don't see any red or any green, but it tells me my branch is ahead of what is on my GitHub repository. And so now the last step is to get push origin main. And if I go over here to my GitHub, which is not, which is over here, refresh this page. All right, you see it says two commits. And here's that message. So if I go there and I can see all the work that I've done has been backed up to my GitHub account, all right? So that's always your last step is to make sure that you have your work backed up online. All right, great. So hope you enjoyed this. Any questions, any comments, happy to hear from you and keep coding and keep learning. Bye.